Yeah, look, I think firstly I'm incredibly humbled to be given the opportunity to to try and, I guess, uh, do what we've been able to achieve with the the test side, um, mm-hmm. albeit we're not the finished article in that yet, but to be able to uh, bring the style of play which we've been able to operate with across all formats of English cricket is really exciting for me. Uh, it's also really humbling, you know, from from South Dunedin, it's a long way to to being the, the head coach of the England cricket team across all formats. So, you know, I'm really excited by it. I think there's some tremendous talent which sits within English cricket um, and there's some great opportunities the next little while. So, it should be fun. Did you think about it when you took the test job or you offered it when you took the test job? Would you have taken it initially when you took the test job, do you think? Well, I think over the last couple of years, the schedule almost made it impossible to, to have one person doing it across all formats with the schedule easing somewhat not completely easing but it's easing somewhat it allows the opportunity for someone if they're prepared to to work hard it gives them the opportunity to um, to go across all the, all the formats and you know there will be some challenges I'm under no allusions to that more time on the road um, my family will, I'll have to bring them along f- for the ride a lot more as well um, I'll have to rely on a lot of the, the guys who um, sit amongst the coaching staff uh, at times as well to be able to step in when, when the odd occasion comes up but that's exciting in itself because it gives other people opportunity to grow and to flourish and you know ultimately I'll, I'll be the one in the gun for the results and I'm all fine with that but yeah. you know it's an exciting opportunity and I feel like feel like the bet's worth it yeah it's a big commitment isn't it I mean will, will, will you miss some series to give yourself a bit of home time do you think yeah look I, I think there's some series which you know we we're able to step out at certain times and we'll do that with all of the the, the, the players and um, you know support staff too I think it's important to make sure guys are fresh at, at times and you know I don't, I don't know when those will be um, but I think it's fair to say you know some of our assistant coaches will get the opportunity to step up and, and run the team at certain times and, and I'll still very much have a firm a firm hand on, on how it's running and, and, and make sure that we're, uh, we're staying true to what we're, what we're, we're about um, but it probably just takes the pressure off them as well because the results will ultimately sit with me. What is it about English cricket, or the, the setup, or the players, or the management, or something? What what, what is it about it that's 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 attracted you so keenly to English cricket? It's a great place, isn't it? I think it's a great place. It's full of tradition. It's it's an incredible um, history of of English cricket. And I can walk. I walk into the grounds, and you sit on the balcony at Lords. You sit here at the Oval. You go to Trent Bridge. All these places all around England. You see the fans that turn up and support English cricket. See how much the game means to the people in this country, and it's a game which has given me an incredible life. Um, to be able to still be involved in the game and to do it in a country which supports it so well and um, and has such an influence over the global game is is incredibly humbling. And that's why, it, you know, when the opportunities arise, you only really get a couple of opportunities in life to make sizable change and impact. And and I think this is one of those times, and that's what excites me the most. And it's a very exciting schedule. You've got, you've got two Ashes, you've got Home and Away, you've got a World Cup as well, so actually there's a lot to keep you going at that time. Yeah, lots of opportunities, right? Yeah. Um, so we'll see where we land, um, but I'm excited by it, and, and I think it'll be nice to have a similar voice across uh, all formats, and it gives a real sense of clarity to all those who are operating as players within the England system that you know, this is how we want to play over the next few years, and and uh, you know, let your talent come out. Put your hand up, and and uh, and, and we'll have a good look at it. Yeah. Let's talk about this summer. It was always going to be an interesting time, wasn't it? Slightly low key from a, an opponent's point of view, and other things going on. You've shown a bit of a ruthless side as well. And the Jimmy Anderson tap on the shoulder at the start. Um, new players coming in. Um, how, how, how do you think five Test matches in with one to go that this season has gone for England? Yeah. Look, firstly, we've been tested right throughout the summer. It's not you know, whilst the results look. That, you know, five nil on the surface. It seems like we've walked through every game. That's certainly not the case. There's been many times and and most of the test matches where the game could have gone either way. And if we weren't as uh, further down the line in, in terms of where we are now as a cricket team with our mentality and our ethos, we may have been exposed. But we've been able to come through those those times. We've been able to make good decisions and still remain that positive side that we want to be. Um, and and we've been able to ultimately get the results that we want and and that's a real sign of, a, of improvement and maturity within the setup so now we've introduced talent throughout this summer as well which after India we identified as needing a bit of refinement 
um, and that talent's has gone really well. Um, you know, and, that, and that's always exciting, and and that's always a pretty good sign of where where your environments at. I think when guys can come in and and do well and and not feel too much pressure and just able to go out there and play cricket and let their skills come out. So. Yeah, it's been a, a really good summer so far. I think it's the summer we've improved as a cricket team. We're still not the finished article, I understand that. Um, more time on the tools, more familiarity amongst us will give us more opportunities to, to win some big series in the, in the next little while. Just on Jimmy, um, obviously it wasn't an easy no. decision and, and Jimmy took it incredibly well. Look, he's been an instrumental part of the side over the last couple of years and and he's allowed us to be able to fluently bring in the ethos that the skipper and I have, have had, um, and it's and you know he's been a huge part of that. I think for Jimmy, I think whilst he, he it's probably not the news he wanted to hear at the time, I think the fact that you know we flew over from England and we did it face to face, and I think that he really respected that. Um, and as you've seen, his total investment since the first test at Lords as a player to now being a um, I've been a consultant and a mentor within the setup, and seeing the talent that he's been able to work with and what he's been able to get out of that talent, I think I think it's worked really well, and I'm excited. I think he's got a huge future as a coach, um, and, and we're so lucky to be able to call on that experience and and that person to be able to help guide the next generation of fast bowlers. Have you always been good at making that sort of tough decision? Um, Coaches manage how to do it, don't they? Um, I mean, are you used to doing that? Did you worry about tapping him on the shoulder or not? Oh, you can always worry for the person, right? But um, I guess where I come from, South Lynn, you, you get awkward conversations on, on a fair few occasions, so you've got to become pretty comfortable with them. Uh, it's how, I guess it's how you handle them, and it's you know there's a level of respect there which you need to to make sure that you you deliver, and you're not going to get every one of them right. Um, but sometimes you need to make calls which you think is for the betterment of the side and, and is going to take a team forward and, and I, not everyone's always going to agree with those decisions but you've got to have the conviction of what you and, and, and your methods and where you think the team needs to go. As far as the approach particularly to batting is concerned was it always the way that you looked at it that it might it, it, it instil that very positive mindset for a couple of years and then throttle back a bit it, it does appear this summer as if there's been a more measured attitude to, to, to batting when, when it's been required yeah I don't know about that to be honest I think it's, it's all circumstantial right at the start we've never talked about travelling at six runs and over that's been a byproduct of trying to create an environment where guys are able to block out the noise they're able to be where their feet are they're able to make good decisions and be totally present and allow their talent to come out and if that talent is six runs and over then great and on another day that talent could be four runs could be ten runs you, you don't know I guess what we're trying to do within the group is, is shift pressures identify when we're under pressure make good decisions in that moment but also be courageous enough and clear enough to be able to shift pressure back on the opposition I firmly believe this game is as much as it's about skill it's about shifting pressure onto the opposition and you know maybe over the last two years our batting group in particular it's, it's been it's been pretty consistent so there's a natural maturing period there where guys become more familiar with other people's games and, and bounce off one another and you know, I think this summer has been has been really good but you know, I still think that we've got to keep looking to put pressure on the opposition Yeah, You, you have made some Sort of really brave decisions as well. I'm thinking of Shot Bashir, for instance. Uh, here, Jamie Smith, the head of Ben Folks, or difficult political decisions, if you like, internally. Tell me about Josh Hull, I and mean, this is a, this is an extraordinary. One. He's taken what 16 wickets in his in his career, two this year for 160 something. What is it about him that's making you pick him for this Test match? Yeah, look, I think first of all, I do believe county cricket and Test cricket are quite separate. Um, games and if we were picking a county cricket side um, we'd probably pick a, a very different side um, But and, and hence why we have that respect and that understanding of why counties and they do what they do with their own staff but the job that we have and the task that we have is is so different and we identify the, the skill sets that we need for the conditions and the opposition we're going to come up against and, and hence the, like, the likes of Jamie Smith, Gus Atkinson, Shoah Bashir, Tom Hartley over in uh, in India, 
Ran Ahmed in, in Pakistan, these sorts of guys, you'd say Zach Crawley, the perseverance with him is because mm. of the start initially, and then we obviously got some results after that. These types of players, we feel, give us the best opportunity to put pressure on the opposition, and, um, and I think Josh Hull is one of those guys we look at, six foot, plenty, he bowls, good pace, swings the ball, his left arm, he creates a nice addition to what we've got building as a, as a bowling armoury. And, you know, we know he's not going to be the finished product, just like we know Shah Bashir, Gus Atkins and Jamie Smith. These guys, they aren't the finished product, but they've got incredibly high ceilings and they're rough diamonds that it's up to us to get the best out of them and, and to make sure that we shape them and, and give them the environment where they can get to where we think they can get to a little bit quicker than they might have got otherwise. This last one's about 30 days to go, I think, till the first ball is bowled against Pakistan, but no one seems to know where yet. Is that, is that, is that unsettling at all? Does it bother you? I mean, does it affect selection for that tour or anything like that? It? Oh, it definitely affects selection, right? You can't pick a team if you don't know where it's going to be. No. But we're hoping over the next couple of days we'll, we'll find out, and when we do, we'll, we'll sit down and work out the team that we think will give us our best chance. There you go, a very relaxed sounding Brendan McCullum speaking to me yesterday, England's uh, coach now on, uh, on, on all fronts.